paradoxes that keep scientists awake at night. No solutions. The human brain is one of the smartest on the planet, but there are some things we just can't wrap our minds around. One of those is the paradox. We've evolved to think of reality in a specific way, but there are paradoxes out there that suggest reality doesn't work the way we think it does. And now, some physicists think they have solved a 50-year-old paradox. But have they? Let's find out. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about some of the strangest paradoxes that keep scientists scratching their heads at night. So, if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. The Fermi Paradox Humanity time and time again finds itself lost amid the vastness of a universe that we are still struggling to understand. There are many questions we ask ourselves when looking toward the heavens, but one of them always feels just outside of our grasp. Across all the billions of light years of starry sky above us, could we possibly be the only life? The Fermi paradox refers to the dichotomy between the high probability that extraterrestrial intelligence exists and the fact that we have no evidence for such aliens. This paradox was described by the late British science fiction author Sir Arthur C. Clarke, who said, Two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are equally terrifying. The Fermi paradox was devised by the Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi, according to the Planetary Society. He is said to have come up with the idea in a throwaway remark over lunch with colleagues in 1950 when he asked, Where is everybody? He wondered, given that our planet was relatively young compared to the universe, we might have expected someone to have visited us by now. But we had no evidence of that ever occurring. Fermi died four years later in 1954, so did not have long to ponder the question. But his idea has sparked whole fields of science hoping to solve the problem, including the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, SETI. The Grandfather Paradox the grandfather paradox is a potential logical problem that would arise if a person were to travel to a past time. The name comes from the idea that if a person travels to a time before their grandfather had children and kills him, it would make their own birth impossible. So if time travel is possible, it somehow must avoid such a contradiction. In early versions of the grandfather paradox, some tried to argue that time travel was impossible on logical grounds said Tim Maudlin, a philosopher at New York University who frequently writes about physics and philosophy, In a way, that's like asking why right now I can't be wet and completely dry, he said. Well, that's just logically impossible. What are you asking about? But contradictions such as the grandfather paradox don't mean that time travel is impossible. The logical consistency of time travel largely depends on the concept of time, and physicists have many different ways of conceptualizing time. For example, if some laws of physics are considered probabilistic rather than precisely determined, it opens the possibility of multiple outcomes from a trip back in time, some of which may not be contradictory. But philosophers, scientists, and fiction writers have dreamt up other versions of time where it has more dimensions and features. Visualizations have taken the form of loops, circles, hourglasses, Mobius strips, and cardboard tubes. There are also numerous less serious fictional accounts that nonetheless allow for the possibility of time travel such as Jeremy Baramy. Einstein's theory of relativity has been particularly influential. Relativity theoretically allows for space and time to fold over onto itself in structures that have been dubbed closed time-like curves. If these time loops exist, they would be a form of time travel since people inside the loop would revisit the same moment in time. The grandfather paradox is well known and has a good dramatic hook, but it's a rather ineffective controlled experiment. The Polchinski paradox gives us a time travel paradox based purely on laws of motion without any of that tiresome free will. Plus, it involves billiards. Everyone knows the grandfather paradox. You win a trip to go back in time, and while you're there, you accidentally kill your grandfather. Or maybe you intentionally kill him. The point is, he's dead before he had a chance to have kids, and so you can't exist. But if you don't exist, you can't have gone back in time to murder him. How can this paradox be resolved? The answer is, not by investigating the matter like that. Joseph Polchinski, a physicist, came up with a better way of thinking about the paradox. First, instead of going back in time, find a looped wormhole that goes back in time. Second, shoot billiard balls through that wormhole to see at what angle they come out. Third, 
Calculate a shot that is timed and angled so that as the new ball goes toward the wormhole, the old one that's been sent back in time flies out and knocks the new one off course so that it never enters the wormhole in the first place. Suddenly, the myriad complexities of time travel and free will, students of Polchinski have found ways for the ball to make its way through the wormhole and hit its younger self enough to alter its course, but not enough to knock it away from the hole so it's possible that paradoxes simply can't happen in this world. Or maybe they just can't happen in the world of billiards. Observer's Paradox The observer's paradox is also known as the Hawthorne effect in social sciences. In sociolinguistics, it was first coined and observed by William Laboff when he studied variation and style in speech. Observer's paradox as a problem lies in the process of investigating language style and usage among individuals through speech collection. In the process, a sociolinguist sets out to account in the best possible way about the variations occurring between what people say against what they believe they say. The observer paradox also throws into light the question of social class between the interlocutor and the informant. In cases where the two are of unequal status, the informant takes the higher side and thus this influences the information collected. This results to information that reflects self-importance or even looks down effect onto the interlocutor, hence any attempt to analyze the data results to wrong conclusions. Another issue that arises in the observer's effect is the problem of bilingual social groups. In such social groups, it is very difficult to maintain an interactional conversation between two people due to the process of code switching. Informants keep on switching to other codes available. Hence, this becomes a challenge to the smooth flow of the desired speech language. Black Hole Information Paradox The universe really likes its information. It doesn't like to create new information and it doesn't like to destroy any of its existing information. In fact, like is far too weak a word. As far as we can tell, information is neither created nor destroyed. Information throughout the universe simply persists, except in black holes. As Stephen Hawking first discovered in the 1970s, black holes aren't entirely black. They do glow just a tiny, tiny bit. What's more, this conveniently named Hawking radiation is completely thermal. It's just random heat, just like your body gives off. That means that the amount and temperature of the radiation emitted depends only on the mass, spin, and charge of the black hole, nothing else. No matter what you throw into a black hole, from books to cats to spaceships, its Hawking radiation will stay the same, which is fine and dandy. The information is still there, minding its own business. But as the black hole produces Hawking radiation, it loses energy, which means it loses mass, which means it eventually disappears along with all the information it was carrying. So if the information didn't leak out with the Hawking radiation and the black hole goes away, what happened to all the information? Hence, paradox. What's exciting about this paradox is that all of the potential answers lead to new physics. So no matter what, if we resolve the paradox, we'll do so by learning something new about the universe. In conclusion, the universe is full of questions, and there is a lot more it has to offer. So all we have to do is keep a keen eye and look out for answers. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.